What's going on, y'all? Thanks for checking in the Cali's Take. You know what to do. Hit that like, subscribe button. Also hit that notification bell just so you can get the newest and the bonus content first. But hey, let's just go ahead and jump right in. You know, we talk about the playoffs. Round one of the playoffs has been just special. You know, you saw some great matchups and some intriguing matchups. And you also saw some downslides of uh, some teams, or should I say mainly just one team that a lot of people expected more out of in the Brooklyn Nets. So, you know, my analysis of it, it was really a good first round. So that means the second round of the playoffs is going to be even more exciting. So, you know, I definitely can't wait to see exactly, you know, how everything pans out for the second round because we definitely got some exciting matchups. But for the first round of the playoffs, I mean, <clears throat> I had some some I was shocked by, especially, of course, the number one is the Brooklyn Nets. Nobody ever could have convinced me that they could have went out in the first round of the playoffs and didn't win a game. Now, you could have convinced me by saying they went out in the first round of the playoffs to the Boston Celtics, maybe getting beat 4-2, maybe even a gentleman's sweep 4-1 or, you know, maybe seven games. Yes, yeah, probably that's about what I thought it would go, you know, six or seven games. But um, no way in the world I would ever thought they would have got swept that's just unfathomable with Kevin Durant and Kyrie it just shows the lack of chemistry and um, how Kyrie really just disrupts everything and everywhere he goes I mean everywhere Kyrie goes he seems to be a cancer you know it was with LeBron James <clears throat> He was on Cleveland before LeBron came back. LeBron comes back and helped Cleveland win a championship. You know, never threw Kyrie under the bus as far as I'd known. And Kyrie still had a lot of resentment there. And it just seemed like one thing after another with Cleveland. So he ended up leaving there because him and LeBron didn't get along. And then he goes to Boston and has his uh, issues there. End up losing to the Boston Celtics and gets swept by him, which I know Celtics fans love that just for the fact of him being on the, the, the Nets. And, you know, the Nets have or had a big three. And James Harden ends up leaving. Kevin Durant is stuck in the middle trying to be the peacemaker. Kyrie is, doesn't want to get vaccinated, a bunch of BS. And now they find themselves out the playoffs which is very very unlikely very disappointing the way they went out but um maybe next year that's the only thing you could say um as far as you know the Bucks, i felt like they would dominate you know the chicago bulls and you know for the most part they did you know i think <clears throat> they didn't really take them serious you know too much because they just knew that they couldn't you know beat them i mean zach levine you know is good and demar Derozan's good you know and uh but they didn't have lonzo ball if they had lonzo ball i think the series would have been a little bit better simply because lonzo ball is um <clears throat> he's one of those players that has a high iq for basketball and he understands how to play within his means you know he's not gonna do too much he's gonna try to you know make sure he, he he's more of a pass first point guard but he can knock down threes at a decent clip now, especially since he's been on the Bulls. He's been shooting threes a little bit better since he's been on this team. But he just can't stay healthy as well. Zach Levine also, you know, he's had some knee issues, you know, this year specifically. And I think he had even an injury in the first round also against the the Nets. I mean, excuse me, against the um, the Bucks, where, you know, he didn't he missed a game, I believe. But overall, you know, like I said, that was a um, pretty good series as well. I thought it would be a little bit more exciting. But like I said, what out all the Bulls pieces and Lonzo Ball and you know players like that I'm not big on DeMar DeRozan and I've, I've never been a big fan of his he had an outstanding season this year he really did you know I can't take that from him but I'm just never been a big fan of his he's just not the type of guy who can finish to me you see what I'm saying he can have good seasons good moments but he's not the type of guy who can carry you and finish a season out and win a championship he's just not that guy I mean I've always said that about him even when he was on Toronto Toronto had the number one record two three years in a row one time i believe with him on there him and kyle lowry but they just couldn't seal the deal because you know demar Derozan can't hit the shot when you need him to he just can't do that and he he's not he, he's not a superstar you know what i'm saying to me he's a star player all-star but he doesn't have that superstar label on him to me because he just doesn't deliver in the biggest moments and he really 
is not a, a, a good number one on our team. I think he's more or less a good number two, actually. But I mean, you know, he plays as a number one. He puts up good numbers, but it doesn't amount to anything. And um, then you see Kawhi Leonard go there to the Toronto Raptors and win a championship the first year. You see what I'm saying? So it just separates the, the, the greater players from the good players. So that's OK, though. You know, he still had an outstanding season, was in the um, <clears throat> MVP uh, conversation, at least at one point in the season. So you got to give him credit for that. But Giannis is just being overly dom dominant in that series. I knew Giannis would just do his thing. You know, uh, Chris Middleton played pretty good until he got hurt. And Drew Holiday has always been a staple, you know, uh, everywhere he goes because he plays both ends of the floor. He's very underrated to me. I mean, he can give you 16, 17 a game, but he can also give you lockdown defense on the other end of the floor. So I always, you know, uh, have appreciated Drew Holiday and what he's been able to, you know, uh, accomplish. You know what I'm saying? As far as just being a good professional player, getting a championship, you know, by the way, you know, with Giannis and everything. So, you know, that um, that definitely, you know, what I'm saying it's good for his career and everything because he, you know, kind of I can say he was a journeyman, but, you know, he, he went to a few teams, but, you know, he found his footing and he's always been a very underrated player to me. So good for him there. And uh, the Bucks are rolling, you know, what I'm saying so into the next round, you know, they have um, <clears throat> the opportunity to, you know, re Pete as champions if they can you know make it you know through the east and uh, possibly go back to the finals and you know um you know defend their title that's exactly what their their hopes are anyway so we'll see exactly how that pans out but uh, a lot of people believe Giannis is the best player in the league at this point it's really kind of hard to argue somewhat because you know he's just playing so good you know on, on pretty much both ends of the floor you know what I'm saying he's just becoming like really really dominant you know he's not it's not even like he's a great player anymore it's like he's a dominant player you See what I'm saying? So you got to give Giannis credit for what he's doing and everything there. And then you had, uh, you know, Miami Heat, you know, going against the uh, the Hawks. You know, I figured that that one right there, it, it was, you know, not a bad series. It, 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 was, it was it was pretty much expected what happened in that series. You know, um, Trey Young went out pretty badly last game, 11 points. You know, they um, they just really didn't have it. You know, John Collins wasn't 100 percent healthy, um, you know, Capella not healthy. You know, what I'm saying it's just a lot with the Atlanta Atlanta Hawks and Trey Young can only do but so much. I'm, <clears throat> you know, from where they were last year, they went pretty they went further last year than they did this year. But I mean, you know, for the most part, you know, they, they played a pretty good, you know, style of basketball in regards to that series. But they really couldn't do nothing with the Miami Heat. I mean, Miami is just a better team overall. I mean, they got more, you know, selections on offense and you know they play harder on defense they're a much better defensive team i didn't really think that series was going to go far and it didn't you know um pretty much went ex went as expected as i said you know um i felt at some point you know trey young was gonna like kind of flame out a little bit you know really because he didn't have much help on offense and things like that but at the same time you know like i said miami is just the better team, you know what I'm saying? No doubt. I mean, I, I, a lot of people see them actually being in the Eastern Conference Finals or maybe even making it to the Finals. So, you know, they didn't have the number one seed for no reason. So you got to give them credit for, <clears throat> you know, what they were able to accomplish in the first round and get past it to move on to the next. I think they played the 76ers, so that ought to be, you know, a very interesting game. You know, Jimmy going against his old team in the Sixers, you know, and Joel Embiid. So, but, um, you know, it, it went as expected against Atlanta. And then... You know, on the West Coast, I mean, you know, um, definitely some highlighted games there. You know, first off, the, you know, Memphis and, you know, the Timberwolves, definitely exciting, 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 exciting basketball. Looking at all those young players just <clears throat> go out there and, you know, um, play their game to a high level the way they did and doing currently. You know, it's, it's definitely, you know, uh, a lot of highlights in that series. You know, that's probably the most highlighted you know, series of all series, simply because you got, you know, Anthony Edwards, you got Ant-Man, you know, you got Cat, you know, and then you got John Morant, Desmond Bain. This dude has just been awesome in that whole, in the whole series. I mean, I don't even know where this dude came from, but I mean, hell, they found somebody in him. I mean, he's definitely fighting for that second best player on that team. It was Dylan Brooks. I still, well, I take that back. It still is Dylan Brooks. Dylan Brooks still is the second best player, <clears throat> I think, on that team. But at the same time, 
I feel like Desmond Bain has a lot to say about that, especially the way he's playing. And, you know, hopefully he'll continuously play like that because Memphis is going to need his three point shooting, especially going into the, uh, you know, the second round. There. I think they're going to be playing the Warriors too. So, I mean, that's definitely going to be a hella crazy matchup. I mean, it's just a lot of fireworks, a lot of, lot, lot of scoring, you know, a lot of players not going to stop each other. It's going to be pretty much all offense, you know, maybe besides Draymond Green playing defense, but it's going to be pretty much all offense in that, that series. I don't know how far they're going to go there, but you know, we'll see how that happens. But um, definitely, you know, the most exciting series I've seen, you know, in these playoffs was definitely Memphis in Minnesota. Minnesota got some talent, man. They really do. I mean, you know, you you look at Ant, you look at Cat, Ant, you know, they even having Patrick Beverly play defense, you know, the way he can play it. And they had they had some leads in that series too. They had they had some games where they was up big, big numbers. The only problem with them is they let, you know, Memphis come back in, you know, a few games where they should have took those games over and won, you know, really. So, I mean, they, they really kind of hurt themselves a little bit in that series. But, you know, for the most part, I mean, it definitely was exciting series, probably the most exciting series, um, you know, of them all, uh, for my, from my personal opinion, just on a highlight level in regards to the firepower that both teams have and both teams possess and how they play hard against each other the way they did. So, you know, um, definitely, you know, uh, definitely the highlight of the, the first round itself, that series alone. And then, you know, you had the Phoenix Suns, you know, against the uh, the Pelicans, you know, they ended them. But at the same time, the Pelicans put up a great fight. And I'm going to say this, you know, B.I. is for real. Brandon Ingram is for real. I mean, if, if anybody, you know, second guesses anything with this dude, this dude is really for real. He can play. You know, he is the real deal. I like his game. I like his confidence. I think he's going to be so much better going into next season with the confidence that he took into the playoffs after the playing tournament of, of eliminating the Clippers the way the Pelicans did. Even though the Clippers were shorthanded, it doesn't matter. Um, they took it into the uh, playoffs and they continued what they were doing. You know, the Pelicans definitely gave a fight and a scare, you know, to the Phoenix Suns, definitely. You know what I'm saying? It took Chris Paul to go 14 for 14, 30-something points, 33 points, I believe, to beat them, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it definitely, you know, it definitely was uh, worth the watch and um, it definitely wasn't a rollover by any means, you know what I'm saying? Now, it might have been a little bit different if Devin Booker was there, you know, the whole time. The series might have actually lasted a lot less, but at the same time, you know, it, it, it went the way it went for a reason, you know what I'm saying? That's just the way it was supposed to go so it was definitely exciting gave us something to look at um another good series to look at in regards to you know some drama there because like i said they gave uh phoenix a scare but overall you know we knew phoenix was going to come out on top or at least i did because i just felt like phoenix is overall just a better team even without devin booker um they still could win a one or two games in a series because they got mikhail bridges on defense which i think he's underrated deandre ayton's offense is getting a little bit better deandre Andre Ayton needs to get a little bit more uh, seasoned on defense a little bit, but you know, for the for the for the most part, his offense has really started to pick up, you know, this year whenever they needed to use him, you know, run the offense through him for a while, even though he played, you know, pretty good offensively last year, you know, when they called his number, but I just felt like he kind of stepped it up a little bit in these playoffs so far. So I want to see how he does continuously, you know, um, going forward. And for the Dallas Mavericks and Utah, um, Utah Jazz, I never expect anything out of them. They're just a trash team to me, always have been. Never liked them, despised them growing up, and they're still the same type of team now that they were back then. You know, they can do good things in the regular season, in the playoffs, they just flame out. You know, even back in the day with Carl Malone, you know, the mailman never delivered on Sunday. So that was the, the mailman was the best nickname for Carl Malone because he couldn't deliver a championship on Sunday. The games they had on ABC and NBC back then against Jordan, you know, he, he couldn't deliver, you know, they didn't win. They didn't win a championship. So, you know, um, that's the way it went and that's the way it was supposed to go. I, from my belief. So, you know, um, when you look at the situation and the totality of everything, it, the series went exactly how it was supposed to do. I was really shocked that, you know, with Luca not playing the first two games, I believe how, um, you know, the Dallas Mavericks maintain, I think they got a split. Cause I think, um, 
uh, Jalen Brunson, I think, you know, he, he had a, like a uh, what 41 point game, I believe, which I, I, I was kind of shocked by that. But I do like Jalen Brunson because I think he's one of the most underrated backup point guards. You know what I'm saying? In the uh, NBA right now, I think he's really good. He, I think he's starting to show his value, too, you know, in regards to that. So, I mean, um, I, I like what they have with that uh, one two punch with the uh, point guard there. I don't like many other pieces on their team not you know Dorian Finney Smith and you know Maxi Kleber and people like that but um you know they they're a very interesting team too because if Luca really gets his rhythm going along with Spencer Dinwiddie who was a big pickup for them um I think uh, well, I actually like Spencer Dinwiddie too I think they can um you know shake things up a little bit you know um going forward in the uh playoffs so now that they're going to be playing Devin Booker and the Phoenix Suns we're really going to see what Luca's made of shout out to him though for getting out the first round you know for his career for the first time in his career and I think for the first time they got out the first round since 2011 since Dirk Nowitzki won a championship for him so I mean you know it uh definitely some history there with the uh Mavericks but um definitely good for them and you know the Warriors and the Nuggets um I would say that series went, you know, pretty much how I expected it to, you know, um, I felt like the Nuggets would give him a fight because the Joker is just really unguardable because he's so slow and he just doesn't play a style of basketball that keeps you interested. You know what I'm saying? He plays so slow, it kind of slows you down mentally when you're guarding him and you don't really know what direction to take. And then he hits you with a, a you know, a, a dope move. And it's like, and then he, he, you, don't, you don't even see how he does this stuff because it's like he doesn't even look like a basketball player. You know, he looks like just, you know, some some guy, just a random guy. He doesn't look like a basketball player to most people. He doesn't really carry that image, but he can really play. That's why he's a joker. He doesn't look like what he really is and how he he really performs. You know, it, 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 he kind of tricks you by watching him, but he can actually outperform you if you don't keep eyes on him and play him closely on defense. So that's why he's the joker. You know, you got to give him credit there. And um, I think they uh, I, I think that young dude. Uh, Bones, I was a Highland Bones Harlan. That dude, you know, Highland, yeah, he came out and um, that young guy came out playing good, knocking down some big shots. So I think they feel like they might have, you know, searched their bents and found somebody else that they can utilize on offense, you know, saying so when, you know, Murray comes back and, you know, Michael Porter Jr. comes back, you know, the Nuggets are going to be really legit, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I, I definitely say, you know, whoever you know, plays them next year in the playoffs is going to have a tough playoff run because they're just a tough team. You know what I'm saying? They got some really good pieces if they're healthy. They're definitely an interesting team when they're healthy. This year, they weren't healthy. And um, like I said, they hung in there as long as they could. But the Warriors did what they're supposed to do. Um, they beat them. And, um, you know, I expected, you know, the Warriors to do that. I, I'm starting to see Clay Thompson, you know, really turn back into, you know, Clay Ups, Elimination Clay, how he was a few years back. You know, he's really starting to catch his rhythm that's bad for the NBA because if he catches his rhythm along with Stephen Curry having his well now it's going to be all bets off for a lot of teams because you're going to it's going to be a hard time stopping the Splash Brothers and seem to be they got a Splash cousin if you want to call him uh Jordan Poole because he's joining the party as well I mean just definitely a pool party in um you know uh San Francisco there in the Bay Area because Jordan Poole is definitely bringing it every single time he plays and he's definitely a threat every time you watch him and play on the floor because he's definitely somebody who adds to their offense and makes them even more dynamic I mean he really literally took over Andrew Wiggins spot Wiggins made the all-star game this year and was playing really good early in the season he still is playing good but his he's he's not got overshadowed because Jordan Poole has taken over his his limelight or the little limelight that he had because I think he was the only one on the Warriors this year who made the all-star team so you know he represented the Warriors in all-star in all-star break so you know um but even with that said you know Jordan Poole is basically rained on his parade you know what I'm saying because he's definitely you know a star player in this league to come I can definitely see that you know and the Splash Brothers love having him around because it takes pressure off them and on top of that Draymond is still passing really good playing hard-nosed 
defense, you know, getting technical fouls, being the same old Draymond, and that's what they need. And Steve Kerr is just loving it because, I mean, he definitely found another piece in Jordan Poole, and they haven't even pulled out their other weapon that they say they have in James Wiseman. And if he turns into be what they think he can be, if he can stay healthy, wow, they really got a good team. Along with that other young guy, they got Kaminga, you know, who plays defense, who's really athletic, you know, as well. So, I mean, they, they really got a good chance to actually, you know, win it all, you know, actually. So um, it's going to be tough in a seven game series against them going forward. But like I said, they took out the Nuggets and, you know, nobody was surprised by that. That's exactly what's supposed to happen. So, you know, moving on to the second round, we got a lot to look forward to. I definitely can't wait till, you know, we get to it. And, um, you know, so we'll see. And uh, I believe it's starting tomorrow, actually, on Sunday. So we got a lot of game ones on Sunday, you know, to start. And, um, you know, we'll uh, definitely, you know, give our analysis and break that down and talk about, you know, you know, the rounds as they go in certain teams. So just be expecting these videos about, you know, some uh, some playoff basketball as well, you know, and um, hey, as far as, you know, the Lakers, Clippers, you know, they're out right now. No L.A. team is in the playoffs. It still feels weird. But I mean, the playoffs still feels real. You know what I'm saying? It still feels good to be watching playoff basketball, meaningful basketball where guys are going out there, diving on the floor for loose balls, hustling, trying to go out the rebounds and seeing superstars do that. You know, definitely let you know it's playoff time. So I'm definitely still excited for the playoffs and everything that's going on. So we'll be talking about it going forward as well. And uh, we'll be giving our now on that and our take on it as always but hey that's my take on everything leave any comments comment section as always and hey Kelly out uh -huh.